Cheers. So then, go uh, Cheers. Oh, my drink? I should, next time I'll have a drink. What are you guys drinking? It's tea for me now. I, 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 got okay. a sh- I grab a shot of whiskey, but I, I can't get up in the middle of this and just grab one. Oh, but by the way, there's an... Oh, so what are you re- re- drinking, Susanna, before I tell you guys? A uh, Big Wave Golden Ale by Kona Brewing Co. Oh, wow. My, I miss beer so much. I don't drink beer anymore because it's... Not, I, I drink vodka if I have to drink. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hard liquor. Yeah, yeah because... I- because, I don't know, it gives you, makes you fat. Beer, beer is the worst. Beer and wine are the worst, so I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how you... I see so many people that eat whatever they want and never get fat. I'm like, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> how is well, that really, fair? My it's metabolism so young, is so high. Like, well, you guys could probably what? bench press me. I'm only like 125 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I can bench press you. Um wow. Okay, but here there's an here's a here there's an oh Lewis, hi hi. Edwards. Hey Lois, how are you doing? Great. I'm Susanna. Oh, it's nice to meet you. Lewis, by the way, we're recording, so just to let you know. So so if you yeah. So here there's an alcohol ban as well. So I <laughs> I told you guys there's a quarantine, so only one person per household gets to come out. I'm in the Philippines for people who don't know. Um, and I have a quarantine card, so that means I could go out, get food, and then get right back in. Um, if, when you're going out, only the everything is closed unless the people that are selling food, and there's lines on the ground, and you have to be separate from each other, and you're not even allowed in the stores if you don't have a mask on, and there's a curfew between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m., and for some reason, I don't understand, nobody can sell alcohol now. I think I think it might be because of domestic violence because husbands and wives are now like have to spend more time with each other than usual and a lot of people are finding this annoying and fighting and husbands beating their wives so I think they're trying to fix that by alcohol ban I don't know maybe I, I don't know if that's the logic behind it but I'm just guessing maybe they just generally don't want people to spend their free time getting drunk (laughs) <laughs> do they actually have the authority to give that kind of order over there i mean philippines apparently they they do so oh wow. yeah i mean they do i get they did so they must have it again i was mentioning this before we were recording like a lot of things that the philippines is a democratic country but it's not as free as the united states so a lot of the things that they're telling people to do here they don't get to do that in the united states so it's pretty i don't know we'll see how it if it has any impact here. Here, the Philippines has had 4,000 cases so far. Hmm. Which, yeah. It's, it's, good. it's going to be interesting over the next couple of weeks to see how this is going to go to play out. Like, in, in the United States, um, I don't think anyone's really, really anticipating that it's going to get any, that this quarantine is going to be lifted any, for any time over the next couple of months. Months? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think it's gonna happen. Like uh, right now, like I'm. I'm going stir crazy being inside here all the time. It's like I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm like you, Armin. I, I like to go out and work out and stay active. I, it's driving me nuts. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm keeping myself active because I have some working equipment here. But I need to get out of there. And right, get out of right. here. And just be outside. Wait, you don't get yeah. to go out for one exercise a day? No, we can. It's like um, but um, they like I oh. I used to pull up bars at, um at a uh, at a park nearby, but um, and they were they were they cordon um even more off than it was before. Like they, they uh, at first they had this this um this kind of safety tape around the um um the uh, the children's playground, and then I, I found out just a few days ago they started cordoning off the park itself, and it's like holy shit! Now can you even go on the go into the park? Wow, uh, yeah. Are you guys, all of you, stuck inside completely? Like, you don't even get to go out for, like, a run or, like, some walk or something like that? I've already been in sh- on shelter in place for one month. Oh. And I'm going to be for another full month minimum. Yeah. Are you are, are you okay with that? Are you going insane? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> this has kind of, are... like, not changed my lifestyle at okay. all. <laughs> um... Partially because, I don't know, I'm a homebody and, I mean, I do really miss getting outside and just seeing life. Like, I miss commuting on the bus. 
like, because it was my favorite thing just to look out the window and, you know, every day see what's happening in the city and everyone's little lives. And I don't know. Maybe. But I get that. Hmm. I, I live in San Francisco. One month from now, we're going to have this call and everybody's going to be like, uh, <laughs> 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 we'll see. Everybody's like, yeah, fine. This is okay. But we'll see. One month from now, we'll oh, how are you guys doing? Susanna, it's got to be really difficult for you because, you know, the Bay Area is my hometown too. And I, you know, up there, it's the bustling city with so much activity. I mean, I'm down here in San Diego and it's like, it's so much space it's it's space so much more apart it's like you know without that kind of social interaction it's got to be like a even more of a change than it is down here man i'm gonna rave so hard when this is over <laughs> find me in the underground bunker like yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah i i miss i miss the city life for sure oh. yeah i was supposed to see my wife in la in may now i don't get to see her so this is that's that's the main thing that I'm dealing with. Uh, every time we complain about these things, there's going to be one person in the comment section that's going to be like, oh, you guys are complaining, but other people have it worse. And blah, blah, blah. And like, if, if you go by that standard, nobody gets to complain about anything. Because <laughs> there's any, always something worse. There's always something worse. Like, even if you're like, oh, my God, I missed my paycheck, and now I'm not going to be able to pay rent, then I'm going to go to that person like, well, you're so lucky. I know here in the Philippines, people, they, they're not going to be able to afford food, right? And then that person, because of this whole coronavirus, and then that person that is not going to be able to afford food, I'm going to be, they complain. I could go to them and be like, oh, now you're, you're complaining about not being able to afford food, but this is only happening to you for one month. Other people don't, there are so many other people that could not afford to pay food ever. Like, they're, you know, now you see how, <laughs> and now, like, I could, I could keep going. Like, unless you're the worst, per like, you're the most miserable person on the whole planet, then you don't get to complain about anything ever <laughs> i mean it, it's not so bad because right now it like it, what, what helps me is like you know i can't like w one of my favorite activities is practicing martial arts and i was i, I was kind of playing around with the idea of maybe doing another fight this year but you know th now that's not going to happen because i can't train but you know i i love to read i love to i love to write i like to um just pursue a lot of intellectual activities and learn all languages so what i've just been doing is completely changing my focus Spend more time with um, practicing the language and spend more time reading. I think Michael Shermer just came out with a book today that I've been wanting to read for a long time. I just bought it and um, and looking forward just to tearing into it. It just helps to be able to change the mindset. Oh, we're gonna have Michael Shermer on the podcast tomorrow. Secular oh, judge. Secular judge. Oh hell oh, no, yeah! Wait, wait, is it Michael Shermer? Hold on, Michael. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. He's awesome. I've seen him live. Mars, what language are you trying to learn? Oh, sorry, it's Marcus Sherlock. Michael Sherlock. Oh, Mike. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have Marcus Sherlock later. Yeah. Damn it. Sorry, Sherlock. I forgot. Um, <laughs> now you're gonna, people are going to be like, ah, oh. Marcus Sherlock be like, what? No, Marcus <laughs> Sherlock. <laughs> no, Marcus Sherlock is really good, actually. He has uh, published, he has my books published with Atheist Republic as well. So he, well, anyways, I, I'm not going to be able to. Uh, get out of that! I'm trying, but no, I already, I already. Just stop not, all your head. <laughs> stop, just, I'm just gonna stop. <laughs> all right. Speak Mars. I want to know what language you're learning. I'm learning my native language of Chinese. Hell yeah! What dialect? Yeah. Uh, the Mandarin dialect. Um, oh. I didn't grow up speaking it. For some reason, my folks didn't get, didn't make me. Um, um, they didn't have me learn it when I was a kid, so I, you know, I, I, I studied it. I studied at UCSD before the whole social before the whole social justice warrior craze went went on. Thank God. Not don't thank well whatever, um, and <laughs> I really enjoyed it, and um, you know, just continued it to, to to where I'm at now. Like you know, went from being not being very fluent to being able to hold a conversation. You know, I just really really enjoyed it. Do you think it's worth the investment, given that within five or ten years from now? There's going to be so much AI that will just translate everything in real time, and nobody's going to care what language you're speaking in anymore. They're going to nope. have so many apps and everything. They're just going I mean, to be like. I, I think it makes a huge difference. Are you kidding me? Why? Like, when you when you go watch watch literally any video, you can find them on YouTube. Just like of people going to a community where they speak a certain language, and someone that they do not expect 
speaking that language to them. It brings so much joy to such people. It's such a point of connection. Yeah, but that's now. I'm talking. I'm saying like in. That in, is still going to apply. I, I, the I, sharing of the, something. This is like the, this is this is like w- when we grow older. This is going to be like what what the boomer version of people today, right? Oh, it's so like <laughs> you know, it's going to be like our kids are going to be like, why would I learn another language? Everything is just translated in real time, and people are like, oh, but the joy you bring to people when they hear you speaking a language, I don't like, okay, Zoomer, like whatever. <laughs> well, uh, Armin, go, go ahead and correct me here if, if I'm if I'm not. I agree, Lewis. Understanding you, but like uh, it's, um, I mean, is it useful? I mean, if you're talking just at about a, from a pure pragmatist point of view, probably not, because I, I read earlier this year, and don't quote me on this, Google is working on something that allow you to translate languages in real time, and yeah, yeah and if you, I didn't if you're, even know that, but I can predict that it will ha- happen. Yeah, and um, when 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 that happens, it's pretty much gonna, um, it, it's gonna put. For better or worse, learning languages for practical utility is going yeah. to eliminate that entirely. Yeah. But you know, as for someone but who you guys just- are acting as if this technology is going to be a permanent fixture of life, as if things can't go haywire and the, we have to go analog again. God forbid. <laughs> I mean, I learn because I enjoy it. I, I, there's something about saying something in another language that I um, that I enjoy. Like you know, I'm if if I had a I, I tell everyone if I had, if I was a billionaire, I could spend the rest of my life being a student. Like Chinese is definitely a language yes. like I, I enjoy studying, and and, and if I could, I, I okay. I, so you're doing it for fun. That's different. Like yeah. you could you could be like riding horses for fun. That doesn't mean that you could just replace cars with horses. Like right? yeah. So, yeah. When you but, learn a language, you learn a culture too. Sure. Mm-hmm. There's something about you. You feel more involved in the culture, and you learn more about it. Yeah, but those are okay. But I can I can appreciate the enjoyment factor. But we have to admit there will be no utility and like there's no useful. There's going to be no useful reason for us to learn another language. There could be I only. I completely like, disagree. Well, or, 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 <laughs> if, if you are raised bilingual, if you are raised bilingual, your brain is literally physically different than someone who was raised monolingual. And it makes the transfer of learning to other subjects easier. There are neurological... You could achieve that by playing with puzzles while you're growing up. No, you you can't. It's specific to language. Your brain will change no matter how, whatever intellectual activity you do, (laughs) your brain will change like in a specific way, right? But... It doesn't really matter if you're learning a language. It doesn't matter if you're playing with puzzles. It doesn't matter if you're reading more books or um, your brain is going to be different from a person that is not doing that. I understand your point, but language learning is something very specific and it's different. Yes. Yes. I'm sure we could find a better alternative that is there does are. achieve that and also is actually gives you some useful skills rather than... Well, it, so, okay, I got I got to throw in. When I was It is useful when I now. Was, That's 5 years from now. But go, sorry. When I was teaching and the students would ask me something and they say, "Well, why are we learning this?" And so I would just say, "For your own personal edification." <laughs> and they would get so mad at me. <laughs> I I think personal edification is an important thing. Yeah, and we, there's many things that achieves that plus is useful. <laughs> like there are many You're so stuck on this. <laughs> there are many things that can achieve the same, you know, benefits plus it's useful. I'm not saying by the way, I'm I'm I still I still support Mars is what Mars is doing because Mars is ad- admitting that it might be useless, but he just enjoys it. So that's a different argument, right? I'm if I go right if I go like ride horses because I enjoy it. I'm not making a claim that no who needs cars when you have horses. I'm not making a claim. I just like I like riding horses, okay? So that's just a personal thing, right? So if Mars enjoys learning Chinese, it doesn't matter that it's not useful. He's having fun with it, right? So that's a different thing. But but it is useless other than the fact that it gives you joy. I don't you know what I mean? I this... think that just because in the future we will have something that better at a, just because we have something that will better execute the utility does not mean that learning it is not useful 
Okay, I, Zoom. We could have AI. Oh my God. For <laughs> the record, I am officially on the cusp year of millennial and Gen Z. I'm so I'm in between. Okay. Fight me. I remember 9 11, so I think that makes me a Wait. millennial. Oh. I said Zoomer, not Boomer. This is when this hey, is. I a remember thing. World War II. <laughs> Do? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You go way back, Willis. Yeah, what? Wow. You go way back. <laughs> I do. <laughs> no, I, actually, I have friends actually, that asked me, was there dirt back then? <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. But I'm young wow. at heart. <laughs> True. Uh, I guess I'm I not, shouldn't have said that. No, that's okay. I'm not going to teach my kids, if I ever have kids, any other language. A lot of people... No, I'm not. I'm not gonna. Uh, that is such a disservice. No. In fact, a lot of people, a lot of people consider me unpatriotic because a lot of my followers from Iran are like, "You're not gonna teach your kids Persian." I'm like, "Why would I even do that? If I if I had to pick a language to teach my kids, it would be Chinese, right? Why would I le teach them a language that makes them able to talk to 80 million more people, where I could teach them a language that could make them speak to one billion more people like oh because their father is Persian from Iran and it's like tradition and blah 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 like why you, who gives a fuck <laughs> like I don't know <laughs> I doubt Chinese will ever replace English as the business language but like it, it definitely has the kind of utility with China rising as it is which scares the shit out of me quite frankly oh my god it scares the shit out of me as well i honestly think like a lot of people are saying like oh you know it's imperialist like doesn't yeah. care about human rights just wait until china becomes the world superpower <laughs> oh my god nobody cares nobody's gonna care about human even even right we now they can shit yet <laughs> right no the countries that care about human that pretend to care about human rights was because the united states for some years pretended like oh if you don't united states and europe were like if you don't care, if you don't have a good human rights record, we might not trade with you. So countries were like, okay, fine, we could we could pretend to care about it, all of us together. But now with China, is like, hey, United States is not giving you a loan because of your pre poor human rights records. Come to our banks. In fact, we love it that they're not giving you loan because of human records <laughs> because we want to compete in the financial world with them. So all these people who are being rejected come to us. So it's like, is nobody like, oh, we can stop pretending to care about human rights. So even the whole imagery of it is going to go away. It's, uh, it's going to be horrible. It's, it's terrible because, like, you know, it, seems, it's, it just seems to me the media is just being really, really silent on what China's doing to the Uyghur Muslims. Um, yeah. on the, on, I'm like, well, oh, my God, you, you guys complain about imperialism and human, human rights. Why don't you see what's something wrong with China? Right, right. Oh my right. God. Ugh. And the only so hope bad. that I the only hope that I have is that as China's economy grows, the, not the GDP, but the GDP per capita, if that grows, usually that means more people are going to be demanding equal rights, I mean, democracy, free speech. Usually higher GDP per capita. You, not always. A lot of people are going to be like, oh, but what about Saudi Arabia? What about like Kuwait? No, usually, okay? And also the examples that people give is because the, like Saudi Arabia has so much oil that it doesn't really have to, didn't usually have to worry about. The reason why people's GDP per capita as, as it grows, democracy and peace and free speech and all these rights grow is because people, if the revenue of the country is reliant on people paying taxes, the people become the boss, right? But in a country like Saudi Arabia, when there's so much money coming out of the fucking ground, you don't really have to worry about people paying you. Like you're not, people are not your bosses, right? Because you get money from other places, right? So usually, when uh, GDP per capita grows, the you know the values of a country grow uh, changes as well. So I'm hoping that's going to happen with China. A lot of people are like, oh, China is already very rich. Yeah, but the GDP per capita is very low, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. We'll That's my see. hope. We'll That's see what hope. happens. I mean, like, I'm a, I have a lot of relatives who um, who still live in Beijing, and like, um, but um, the other the other half of my family they, they live in Hong Kong. Hong Kong, as we know, has been a British colony for a very very long time. Yeah. Um, there's at least as far as I know, still quite a lot of um, um, a lot of anti mainland sentiment over there. I I, I talked to my cousin 
um, about visiting. And the last time I was in um, Hong Kong, China was back in 2001. Um, I was working on my language skills so I could learn how to um, communicate better with some of the people over there. And um, I remember her telling me, dude, when you're in Hong Kong, don't speak in Mandarin. Don't speak in Mandarin. Like, like Wow. And, and, she, and she says, because people don't like man mainlanders over there. But now, to, to, to put that, to, to clarify a little bit on that position, she says, actually, a few minutes later, she just said, actually, you know, you don't have to worry too much about it, but you know, I gathered from that conversation that like you know, that sentiment is definitely there. And like even before the coronavirus hit, there was still quite a bit of protesting going on um, about you know how China's making its its legal incursions into Hong Kong's sovereignty. And um, with Hong Kong right now, I think they're experiencing a second wave. Um, she told me that of protests um, or virus. I'm sorry. A second wave. A second wave of protests or violence. No, or vi virus. The virus, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. And um, she tells me um, that, um, I'll, I'll need to verify this with her, but I think she said something along the lines of um, the uh, Hong Kong is, is quite vigilant about keeping foreigners screened for the coronavirus, but they're really not doing a lot about um, incoming people from China, which is very strange. So, huh. yeah. Yeah. Mm. But take what I said with a grain of salt. Um, it, it's you know it's just two people talking. It's, like she, it's, like, it's not like she's an, she's an official news source, but hey, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of um, reports, and again, I don't know how true this is, so somebody could tell me if I'm wrong or whatever. But there's a lot of reports saying because China is getting a lot of credits right now for how they're dealing with the virus, but if they didn't hide the information the way they did at the beginning. Mm -hmm. The whole, like the whole world, wouldn't be in a, such a mess that it is right now. Like if they, they really, like everybody is behind in the response. Like the whole world is suffering because China. At the beginning, it was like, yeah, let's try to hide this as much as possible. Like we could have avoided so much misery right now if they didn't do that. So now everybody's like, wow, look at how they're responding to the virus. It's so great, but they like. It's like somebody punching you in the face and then coming out and be like, oh, let me heal that for you. Like, what? <laughs> I don't know. It's like, um, I believe a class action market. lawsuit was... Sorry? I was saying, if they didn't have those live animal markets, it wouldn't have even happened. Yeah, but that's... Oh. I don't know. if that. Can you blame the government for that? or? I don't know. I'll know you can't, but... I mean, actually, I know it's a actually, you can because they at some yeah, point no allow. No, no, because they at some point China. I remember there was a policy to allow wild animals being sell. Because I remember they were going through. Actually, they were going through a famine or something, and people, I don't remember the history. And everybody was really starving, and they passed a law like you could eat wild animals if you want, and they never undid that. So maybe you could blame the government for that as well. Well, they're, so, they're talking about well other nations are, are pleading with them to ban those markets now yeah didn't didn't SARS begin in the same way mm -hmm. or similar I, I heard that they that it did and they for they for a time um, had they, they for a time um, put a dampener on it but it, it, it didn't last for very long and do you get, it, sorry do you guys you guys think it's uh, racist to say ch the Chinese coronavirus, like Trump, like Chinese? You know, like, do you think guys think like uh, it sh people shouldn't refer to that as the Wuhan virus or the Chinese virus? Is that racist or not racist? No, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little torn on that um, because I, I think th there's another. Um, the disease out, out there is, isn't it it's like called Middle Eastern? Yeah, something like That's that. MERS. So, MERS, and the Spanish flu as well. Yeah, and I, I'm surprised that like there there's there, there hasn't been so so much con so much um, conversation about this bringing this into contrast with the people seeing it coming from Wuhan or, or or saying it's a Chinese virus. But you know, there are there's an uptick in um, in attacks against Asian Americans, and given that. You know, I, I don't want to turn this into a political discussion, but given that Trump is known for just making these outlandish statements and he claims it's not a, he claims it, um, he's just saying it because it came from China. Well, no one's going to believe him now, understandably, because of all the, because he's blown his social credit. And um, 
given that it's not really careful with its phrasing, given that we have an uptake in um, in Asian hate crimes, well, yeah. it's 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 hard to take it, it's hard to take his um, his uh, his uh, his his qualifications seriously. Um, no, for, no, forget Trump. Well, is it racist in general to say consider uh, say it's a Chinese virus? Well, okay. My opinion is I don't. Mm, I don't know. I'm not going to say one way or the other if it's racist or not, but I don't think it's helpful either mm. way. I don't think it's helpful or useful to call it the Chinese virus because, like, when AIDS was first discovered, they called it gay men's cancer. Mm. And so people, you know, unfortunately, humans are quite dumb most of the time to go, oh, gay men's cancer, or it, it was known as only a Haitian thing for a long time. Only they can get it. And I know if we call it the Chinese virus, we're dumb enough to think that that excludes us. <laughs> and it doesn't. So it, huh. at the end of the day, it's not useful to call it the Chinese Okay, virus. so it's not useful, but is it racist? I mean, if, you're talking, if, you, if, you, if you make the implication that it came from China, then I, I don't say it's racist. But if, if, if the implication is that it's, in, it's inherent to, 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 to Chinese people, then yeah, that would be racist. I um, think don't you my, know the real virus is capitalism? <laughs> <laughs> I think my answer would be it depends on the intention of the person that is using the word Chinese, yeah. right? So a lot of people, I think a lot of people are getting it wrong on both sides. People are like, if you say it's a Chinese virus, you're racist. I would like, no, you're just not being helpful because it already has a name. Um, and also, given that we're seeing that you know people are being anti acting anti Chinese or anti Far East, Far East Asian, you're yeah. you're also maybe wouldn't be you know not helpful. It's not helpful, and people maybe a lot of people that are using it don't. Have, that's not their intention, right? To spread that stereotype, right? A lot of people are saying like, listen, why are we not using what you know? Because you're telling me not to use Chinese, and we already have viruses that are diseases that are named after location. I'm just going to keep saying Chinese virus because you're, you guys are a bunch of like, you know, offense junkies and you like PC culture. So I'm just going to say, I'm just going to be edgy and calling it the Chinese virus because people are saying, don't call it Chinese virus. So those people are not racist, but again, I don't think they're being helpful because there's actual discrimination and hate crimes are being happening to Ch to Chinese people, right? So, but they're not racist. But there are people that their intention of calling it a Chinese virus is to be racist. So again, you really can never read people's minds. So it really depends on the on the intention of the people who are using it. Yeah, but uh, overall, I, uh, I I agree with Susanna. It's not helpful and um right. Would actually be be bad. So right. Yeah. I mean, somebody might call me a hypocrite and just be like, "Okay, Army, you're saying that because so so in the mind of some people that are saying that you're using it is like, listen, there's nothing wrong with calling a virus after a location because we have precedent for it, right? And because some people are saying this is offensive, I'm going to use it uh, just to tell people like you don't get to tell me what to say and what not to say. Uh, and I'm saying, well, that's not helpful because it actually might increase hate crimes. They're like, aha, Armin, I got you. Because when you speak against Islam and say offend Muhammad like, or stuff like that, you're, you sometimes make jokes about Muhammad and make fun of Islam and stuff. You sometimes you say things that is, doesn't educate people, but you're being offensive on purpose because you're saying I'm fighting for free speech. But we say to you that that kind of those kind of views might actually increase hate crimes. Uh, so maybe you're not being helpful in that in that sense, right? The difference is... What? Go ahead. I'm sorry. The difference is that I don't say... I don't make fun... I don't ridicule being Muslim. You know, I mean, I do actually. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I don't generalize. I don't say stuff about populations of people right i ridicule ideas right so if you for for example if you ridiculed something about a culture in china you know what i mean i don't think you know or a way of, or a, peop, a, a culture or a value that is china popular in china i wouldn't be against that um in fact and if you could find a way to be like look you're ridiculing an idea and this could lead to hate crimes I, I really don't think 
I mean, technically anything you could say could lead to some hate crime, like somebody could, but you have to look at the net benef- net result of the things you say, because in, if that's your standard, technically we can't ridicule anything or we can't criticize anything because ridiculing or criticizing anything, I could find a way to for you to like somehow connect it to some hate crime. I mean, that's I like people to be a little more perpetuation t- argument. Right? I, I- I like Go people ahead, to be a little bit more, 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 a little bit more careful with the language. But the bottom line is, when you're talking about very sensitive issues, you can't walk on eggshells. I mean, like you know, as you said, Armin, like there are definitely parallels here with criticizing, um, like an uh, like an overall ideology, as opposed mm. to um, um, the 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 people who are supposedly um, over it. Like you know, it, I mean, if I, you know, I, I'm I'm Chinese, mm. um, and we know that. This virus came from um, uh, from China, and it, it stemmed from um, I think from from animals to humans, arguably from some certain practices that occurred within their culture. But when you're when you're talking about criticizing culture, you're not you're there's there's a broad amount of people who are under that uh, under that specific culture that's, that that practices to various degrees or another. Right. So. You know, it can't be generalized. You can criticize a culture, but like, um, you're not, you're not. They're still not criticizing people in that instance. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I, I can criticize China, not, not because I'm Chinese, but because like it's got its authoritarian practices. Right. I can criticize the effect, it, the effect it has on the world and its abuse of human rights, especially again with the Uyghur Muslims, um, um, with its hideous treatment of them, right now. Mm-hmm. Now, am I being racist? Am I being, um? Am I being malicious? I don't think so, because yeah. um, again, like you know, what am I? What am I doing? I'm criticizing a government. I'm criticizing certain cultural practices. I by no means am am criticizing um, an overall group of people. Like you know, and people might say, "Oh, you're being racist. You're criticizing Chinese. What kind of Chinese am I criticizing?" Yeah. You know, um, you know, and uh, I'm not I'm not criticizing the, cr- criticizing people at all. Yeah. Certain idea that has very very dangerous effects. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look, Lo- 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 you might. And and you're right. It's usually when you talk about a country or something, it's it's the leaders. The most of the people that live there are just you know wanting to live peacefully and raise their families. And but it's the government that, that is really making you know some of these rules and carrying out some of these horrendous things. The average mm-hmm. person is probably not even involved or doesn't even agree with it i do think though it's okay to make fun of stereotypes of people if it's just humor and you don't actually hold anything against those people like i don't know like there were so many comedians before that i don't think we'll be able to survive anymore in this environment that used to make fun of everybody the white stereotype indian stereotype you know jewish stereotype indian i think those if if that's if it's humor i think you can even go after people, not just ideas. Mm-hmm. If, but if it's just innocent fun and people understand that you don't hold anything against those people, I think usually you do that by making sure every you target every single demographic, and nobody like that, you know, because you can't yeah. hate the entire world. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there used to be those Polak jokes, and there was always some you know, nationality or ethnic group that, that was the brunt of jokes. Because I remember... Go ahead. No, you go, no, no, you go ahead. Don't let me... Inter- like, don't go... If, you go, if I interrupt you guys before you finish, you're going to be like, no, wait, I'm not done. Okay, so go ahead. Like, sorry. So I, I just suddenly realized that some of you probably don't remember the Polak jokes. But there were always... I mean... I've heard tale. Was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean... <clears throat> You know, the, the classic one was somebody hollering to his workers, green side up. And they came, uh-huh. And it said, <clears throat> something, I don't know what it was that it about. There's, there's Pollock's laying sod. And he has to keep yelling, green side up. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to find this comedian that was really good. You know, he made, I don't know, Indian comedian. Do you guys know who I'm talking about? Um, huh? Hassan Minhaj. Um, in, is that Indian? Or no, that's. I don't know. No, he I'm was almost positive. I know who you're talking yeah. about, but I can't. Yeah. Remember his name. Oh wait, 
Uh, wait, is that Russell Peters? Yes. Russell, yes. Peters. Russell Peters. Yeah, he did so many good stereotypes of Indians and all the other races as well. But he does Indian the best because he's Indian himself. Um, you know, I remember Russell Peters was like doing stereotypes of so many different races. And you know who got offended? Who? The Persians got offended because they were not made fun of. Really? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, why is nobody taking us seriously? Why is nobody making fun of us? Oh my god! Well, what's the humor, um, Armin? There's, there's something I want to run past you, actually. Hmm. Um, I went to, actually went to a comedy class um, a, a few years ago up there in LA, and like, like uh, apparently you can learn how to be funny. I didn't think it was possible until the um, the <laughs> The, the, the teacher um, um, explained to us like what exactly a joke is. And this is a guy who's been mentored by like George Carlin, um, by Jerry Seinfeld. Where it clearly uh, hasn't worked on you. Well, anyway, like, he's, he's defined a joke as um, something that it comes in two parts. The first, the first half of the joke is always something that is that makes sense. It paints a, a certain kind of logical picture inside your head in a step by step one, two, three, four logical fashion. And the second half of the joke ends in four, five, six, eight. Verbally, it verbally follows what came from what, what comes from the first half. But the words it uses and the image it comes up smashes up the first part in a very, very absurd way, and that triggers laughter. And Funny people just point this out in every in, in everyday life, mm. even with the most offensive material. So, no matter how um, high-minded or um, virtuous someone is, I, I I'm almost certain that um, whenever they see or visualize something like that, their reaction will be like, "That's not funny. That's not funny." Yeah. <laughs> and they just start laughing. I mean, like, so so you know, from that objective point of view everything is funny uh, to, um, to that point like you know, what, what are your thoughts on that yeah it's all about the juxtaposition of absurdity yeah. i mean it, it's, yes. some of it is is potentially offensive i don't doubt that but if that's the way I, if, if that's how humor works then there is an argument to be made that everything is funny even though it you know it's inappropriate right. and can be dickish to to bring it up but I don't think there is I, anything that is above mockery. Oh no, I, yeah. I can't think of anything. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, wait. Hmm. I don't know. I like think... on principle. <laughs> yeah, on principle, it's not on funny. Principle, but, you know, I don't on think principle. anyeah. Oh, on, on, yeah. on that. Right. Yeah, there's an argument to made that anything that anything is funny. I mean, I think this is very depends on per like as somebody. To, uh, I don't really think that anything is objectively funny. Different people find different things funny. Mm -hmm. Like if my mom just died and you come and make a joke out of it, I'm pretty. I don't think I'm going to find it funny. But well, that just that's not a good joke. <laughs> no, but somebody might find the fact that I'm so shocked that somebody made a joke right after my mom died. My shock. Somebody might find that funny. So like, oh my god, that was so inappropriate. And maybe the fact that it was inappropriate makes the whole situation funny for some people. I don't know. So I think it really, like, but for you that your mom just died, for you it's not funny at all. But for somebody saying, like, oh my god, this is so awkward, the awkwardness of the situation, they might find it very funny. So it really depends on the perspective of how you're looking at something. Yeah, yeah but <laughs> my principle is that nothing cannot be made fun of. But right. your audience is important. <laughs> Right. Yes. I mean, when we well, say I, nothing. Oh, sorry, Liz, you go. So I just a couple of days ago was watching a, a stand up uh, show of Ricky Gervais. And oh, he just there's nothing he won't touch. There's absolutely nothing. <laughs> and you, <laughs> you sit there and you think, oh, you know, but yet he goes on and he gets away with it. Well, I think Louis C.K. even pushes that envelope and pushes that further. Oh. Like, I remember one of his jokes started with slavery is bad, but <laughs> I don't remember I don't remember how that joke ended, but the fact that he said but I was like, wow. Yeah. 
No, it's all about the absurdity of the juxtaposition. Exactly. Like that yes, sentence, yeah. simply the juxtaposition of but made me laugh immediately. I don't even know the rest. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. You know, whenever we say can't um, or somebody shouldn't or can't, there's always, I always have this question like, how? Because when somebody says you can't, there is always this enforcement element that is me- missing. Because when people say like, oh, I mean, you can't do this or you can't say this. I'm like, but I just did. So, <laughs> um, because who's going to stop me? Like, I was like, where's, where's the enforcement coming from, right? And usually the enforcement has to be like from either a platform or a government, Right. And most of the time, people just say, can't, can't, you can't do this, can't do this. And I'm like, and I always like, are you going to back that up with some enforcement measures? Because you can't, you, I mean, you, you can, but you just say can't and you just throw it around. And there's always, you you have no army to back that up with. <laughs> like, who's going to, like, where's your army? Like, do you have like a private army that's going to come arrest me or something like that? Because... You, it's easy to throw that word around, can't, but yeah. I'm always looking for that enforcement element when people say can't. And I will, when always when there's missing, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do it to prove you that I can. <laughs> like, the can't aspect is more is mostly enforced through social stigma, not by yes. like the governmental authority or anything. Exactly, like that. but what, if you don't care about social <laughs> stigma, then you need an army. Yeah. You're Fair right. enough. Yeah. Armin is me as a teenager in my Catholic home. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to stop me? <laughs> uh, you know, it's part of comedy is the bad delivery. Like, I think Susanna would yes. be a good comedian because she has all these, oh. like, uh, yeah, I think so. So, see, it's like, it's not, this is why I disagree with Mars because he said, like, it's just about putting this and together. But two different people could say this exact same thing, and some people are going to be like, "Yeah, okay." And then another person could deliver the same line with the right timing and the right tone and everything, and people are going to be like, "Couldn't stop laughing." It really depends. You know who's a good comedian? Trump is a good comedian. Did you guys watch him roast Bloomberg? Oh my yeah. God, he might not be a good president, but he's a good comedian. <laughs> that was so good. I can't even listen to him for two seconds. I have to turn it off. Really? At least turn the sound off when he comes on, because I can't take it. I'm I recognize opposite. good entertainment value when I see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know who's who would make a good stand-up, whose timing is perfect, Ooh. is Obama. When they had those annual um, press, whatever it was, uh, big banquet evenings he yeah. was hilarious oh yeah but oh. those are those are practice those are like he scripted and everything oh yeah know. scripted but his timing and his delivery yeah. was perfect i mean obama is a good speaker in general whether it's yeah. comedy or not comedy he's probably the best speaker that when it, actually in as president in our lifetime i can't think yeah. of oh yeah I can't stand. I don't know why people like Bill Clinton speaking. I can't stand. So I fall asleep speaking to Bill Clinton. But Obama, he just it's like, that Arkansas draw, oh, that, yes. that sweet sugary accent. Ooh, I can't stand that. I don't like. It. Yeah. Anyway, I think Trump is gonna win though. I'm gonna oh. list last thing we talk about today. Oh. Yeah. I'm, Canada isn't far enough away if he does. <laughs> No, he's going to win and it's going to be horrible for the Supreme Court. That's the, I think that's going to be the most well, it'll be horrible for the whole world. It's going to be three. This is why a lot of a lot of uh, Bernie supporters are going to push Trump into the White House, I think, mm-hmm. because they're I, like, yeah, I really don't understand the um, the reaction that is just erupting from everyone who are angry that Bernie Sanders dropped out of the race yesterday. I really don't understand it. it um, there's just this outcore of how no one wants to vote, vote for Biden because, oh, Biden sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, Biden does suck, but come yeah, on. Yeah. Compared and, to and, Trump. Well, the, the, the I mean, is, he can't speak. Even, you know, a president I think that cannot speak, cannot remember where he is, um, 
I think that would be much better than Trump. Because, yeah, yeah because, I mean, I think you could put a rock in place of Trump and, you know, it was going to be better than Trump. Yeah, because he's not going to be able to, if he can't, like, he's not going to be able to pick, like, these conservative Supreme Court, uh, you know, whatever, how, no matter how bad Biden is, he's not going to p- pick conservative Supreme Court judges. He's not going to do that. No matter how bad Biden is, he's going to do something about like climate change. He's not going to pull out of the Paris, uh, Paris, you know, agreement or whatever. I mean, here's the thing. Um, For me, it's not about who you're voting for, but what. And, uh, you know, Ali wrote a um, this uh, this this huge post the other day that I, I I pretty much agree with everything he said on there is how like you know with um, if 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 Trump gets reelected we're looking at a huge conservative majority on the Supreme Court and I want to see that 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 balance between liberals and conservatives be be be, be reasserted. That's not going to happen with with Trump in office. Now to be to be fair to anyone who's listening out there. I don't. I don't want a liberal majority either, um, um, on the court either. I want. I want. I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll just say one quick thing. I just. I want these these smart conservative and liberal people to, to smash it out and to yeah. You know to to, to come to the, to, uh, the best. I don't care how smart you are. If you're gonna, if you're gonna be like if you don't agree with you know women being able to have you know their rights. If you're gonna make abortion the like the new genocide i don't like if you're gonna i don't know if you i i really don't care how smart you are these people are gonna turn back the clock that, that's mars is I, arguing for I, ideological diversity at the end of the day yes not, not I, not ideological that. diversity so basically Let you know, him finish. This, that what, what it means is that oh we have too many people that are right let's be more diverse and include people who are wrong not oh, really. diversity. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I'm saying, but it's like you know, I like the the the, the very very real, real danger dangers of like of how social justice warriors want to push just this this extreme ideology. I don't want that either. You know, I I I, I am a liberal. I, I I firmly believe in um in in women's rights and gay rights and the rights of minorities, yeah. of course. But like um you know why I don't want a why I don't want to, want it to fall just severely out of balance because i don't want Mark, none of the liberal none of the liberal none of the liberal let judges. Him finish oh, you have to no. you said we have to interrupt you you uh, have to let him finish finish, finish. <laughs> Armin, go ahead i go ahead it's no no, no finish <laughs> I'm, I'm done i'm done go ahead none no. of the liberal judges are woke None of them. None of them are like the liberal. The lib- All the judges, not not just on the court, but the judges in general. None of them are like, oh, let's ban. Like they're all like, oh, should we be able to uh, say? Should Nazis be able to march in the streets and say Jews will not replace us? The liberal judges would be like, yeah, they should be able to. We have a constitution and free speech and stuff like that, right? So. None of the liberals, they're, the ju- when it comes to judges, the li- they're the right kind of liberals. <laughs> not well, right now they're not, but hopefully, and hopefully it'll stay that way. If, if if they're liberal, yeah, oh fine. If they're woke, hell no, stay off the court, stay yeah. off the court. Yeah, but yeah, we don't even have options for liberal judges that are woke to be go to the Supreme Court. So if you pick liberal judges. Go find me a liberal judge that is like, oh, f- like uh, we have to like remove people's freedom of speech because these are too offensive. Go find the judge. There's no option. Like even if you want to pick like far lefty kind of like woke cult judges, you don't have an option to even pick to put in the Supreme Court. So, yeah. yeah so you could go all liberal and you'll be fine. <laughs> Well, I can I can give a report back from the militant left on how they're handling the situation. Okay. Um, yeah, there's just like a general theme of riots, not ballots. Like people are like, I refuse to participate in this settler colonial system, anyways. So mm-hmm. they just don't even vote in the first place. Right. That's very- that- Popular. A lot of them are happy that Bernie is losing because they're thinking like, oh, this was false hope. You should completely give up and revolution is the only way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, a lot of them are like, yeah, th- even better. 
Yeah. We're just not going to participate at all. A lot, of them, a lot of them want Trump to win. A lot of them want capitalism to win, because even though they hate capitalism, because they think the faster capitalism goes, the sooner it will self-destruct and the sooner the revolution will start. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I've seen those people. I follow these people. Uh, they're crazy. <laughs> you know, huh. when Bernie had the picture, people just say they won't vote for, vote for Biden because, like, I'm, I'm back I can here, but um, they, they, like, you know, they say Biden sucks, but I'm like, what choice do you have? And they say, uh, and some will say, like, you know, we want a revolution, we want whatnot, but I'm like, guys, if you don't vote blue, you don't have any institutional power. Why is that so hard to understand? But um, I see people just like. Um, doubling down, saying no, like it's if it's not so and so, I'm not, I'm, I'm not voting for Biden. Like some will even vote for Trump. I'm like, I don't, I don't understand their logic at all. Because they want to destroy institutional power itself. Right. They're not, they're not, they're not even going to be able to dent institutional power unless they have some of their own. L- let me give you some. St- oh, what a concept. <laughs> let me steal man them for you, okay? Okay. So here's the be- like I have been ridicule them. Here's the best version of what they're saying, right? They're saying like, yes, Trump is worse than Biden, right? But we have always been given so, and yes, if Biden wins, and this is the best, a lot of them don't say this, but I'm trying to like give you the best argument they can, right? And Biden winning in the short term is better than Trump winning, right? But if we keep voting for Biden, the Democrats will keep saying that they don't have to have like a Bernie win or a more lefty win because they could keep feeding us people like Biden and they will win. We have to signal to the Democratic Party that unless you don't give us someone like Bernie, we're not going to let you win. So even in the short run, Trump winning is bad. In the long run, we will signal to the Democratic Party that you have to give us a more lefty candidate and that it would be a longer, better investment in the long run. Most of them have abandoned the Democratic Party already. Yeah, I'm talking about the best steel man. I'm not uh, talking oh, about the crazy. I'm not talking about the crazies. I'm talking about the steel, the, the most charitable, uh, logical argument you could give them for not voting for Biden. Not bad, Armin. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, and if you have a counter to that, tell me what your counter is, because we should. This is this was supposed to be thirty minutes. It's already we've been fifty two. It's so good. You guys are is is you guys are fun to hang out with. That's why the time goes by. But I wanted to stop this like twenty minutes ago, but I couldn't. Uh, <laughs> yes, but any count any counter to this? No, not to that perspective. My the the um. I, right now, I'm just more concerned about the the results rather than um, the the um, the. I, I'm concerned more about the immediate results than um, that, than having having a signifier for revolutionary action. Because, I mean, some of the people who want to ha- make this kind of statement, see this kind of example, are doing it for the rights of women, minorities, LGBT people, but. Hey, the Supreme Court is not a presidency. It lasts for a generation, and if you don't do something about that right now, you're doing you're going to do some major generational damage that's going to have long-lasting repercussions. Right. Do you really want that to happen? I, I my 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 personal answer to that is hell no. Yeah, that the answer is that the immediate the, if the immediate results are not going to remain just immediate. Like, this is like, oh, this is going to be a short-term setback. It's not going to be a short-term setback, okay? (laughs) The judges are going to be for life. The climate, the damage to the climate is going to be for life. So it's not a short-term loss. It's a long-term loss. Even if Trump is here for four years, the results of his presidency is is going to be remaining with us for decades to come. You're going to walk away blood one way or the other. Are, are you want to walk away with a limp or do you want to walk away crippled? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. Some serious things have happened that people aren't even aware of. He has disassembled the entire government. I mean, read The Fifth Risk. That's an amazing book. Uh, Michael Lewis, Fifth Risk. He describes how Trump has disassembled the entire government. All a lot of different, uh, well, or you know, okay. organizations within 
the government. And it, it, it scares you to death because we see the surface things that he's damaging, but there's an awful lot more that he's, that he's destroying. Hmm. Like this, he had a 69-page book on how to deal with uh, pandemics and how to see when one was coming, and he threw it away. Oh, yeah, I know about that. And, and, but, but there's so much more he's doing that, that we never hear about. Mm. But he's undoing, really. <clears throat> it will be entertaining, though, for na- another inter- four oh. years. I mean, it will be the most costly entertainment I ever consumed. Yes. But, but, <laughs> but it will be entertaining. I mean, Biden, Biden winning is going to be so boring. Listen, like, who would show? Who would like start, if he comes out and to give like a press conference or stuff like that? Who would watch that? I wouldn't watch that. I mean, I know Lewis doesn't like listening to Trump, but most people love him or hate him. Most people are glued to the TV when he's talking. <laughs> you damn I, I Canadians using us for your entertainment. <laughs> it's this goddamn Canuck right here. <laughs> Actually, I think Biden will, will, he's real. I mean, he cares and he's real. And he, and he knows foreign leaders personally. And he I used think, to know them. He doesn't even know his own name right now. Well, he's... <laughs> <clears throat> but I think he will turn things over to people that, that do yes. know how. Yeah, yeah. And, and that he knows how to, you know, manage. And I think he'll be a transition... I think he will be controlled by his, like... The, he would, he's, he's a theocrat's dream come true. Because he would just be in the background and people would be just like, Okay! We could do things and say the and put just write his notes and just be like here read this right so all the people all the people in the background be able to control like all these agencies government agencies all CIA all the intelligence agency they would be like Biden would be such a great option we could do so much and he wouldn't even notice <laughs> I don't know it might, it might be crazy, a transition no. what it might be a transition yeah. Anyways, we should. Susanna, do you want to add anything before we end this? Oh, yeah, I yeah. Had a fun time hanging out with you guys. This was yeah. like the highlight of my day. Yeah. Uh-huh. Thank yeah. you. So, and but Bart, it's so great to meet you. I've seen a lot of your, you know, comments and things, and <clears throat> it's good to meet you guys. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice to meet you too, Louis. So we, sh- Susanna, they should what? They should hit what with the like it's what. <laughs> 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 oh my god slap that like and subscribe like it's 434 <laughs> by the way which which buttons do you guys think people should press which buttons yes what? which buttons should they hit you mean like point on the screen where it should no 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 me? which one of the buttons under the video people should hit like and subscribe no 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 and the bell thingy all of them all of them you see <laughs> every single one of them you see under the video there's a like there's a subscribe don't even think about it there's a bell thingy don't even think about what they do there's a share button there's just go down there and just go crazy every single button that you see under the video just click it just click including, every single one of them including the thumbs down yes including yes. the thumbs down all right okay. including the thumbs down yes Get that all, of them. <laughs> all of them <laughs> All right. All right. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop recording. Oh, my God.